into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God Bless America. No, no. Let's not use up the fuel. steam. Let's not use up our steam fuel. fuel. Steam fuel. Uh, look, I've, I'm here fueled by wedding. <laughs> I'm coming off of a three-day wedding. Uh, I'm really run down. I have a very sore throat, but I'm keeping it at bay with kratom and beer. Oh, yeah. Riley is doing research. He was cast in a UK version of the classic film Wedding Crashers. Yes, as, as, of course. Yeah. Um, or, 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 of course, as, as they called it... Um, the nuptial dropsies in the UK. <laughs> Wedding smashers. <laughs> yes. No, that's, that's that's terrible. Smashing smashers. Sma- smashers. Yes. I'm gonna go to Europe and get all the just make up a bunch of shit and get it all wrong. Did I just, just say fuck up our headphones? Just say the c word a lot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, uh, honestly, again, in Britain, you really can't go wrong. It's it's not. I don't want to do this to you because you're from England and it's like a fucking rude yeah. thing to do to go to somebody else's place or to be like, you're from Boston. Hey, you like fucking, blah, you know, you say the N-word all the time. Yeah. All the the cliches, but uh, but it is delightful. I wish you guys could jump inside of my head and then hear you saying like ice lolly and <laughs> shit like that. But wait, you want to hear me use English terminology in my non-English accent? Yeah, okay. We just want to hear you say the C word. We're, <laughs> we're kind of... Bullying you into it. All right, all right, trouble. all right. Riley Quinn. Corbin uh, government. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Whoa! Damn, the worst swear of all. <laughs> it's the most anti-Semitic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to motherfucking Pod Damn America, the goth socialist podcast uh, for... Um, Transatlantic... Uh, <laughs> com- comedy leftists. Sure, uh, that'll work. Yeah, the, transatlantic the, com- comedic praxis. Here's what we are this week: uh, Pod Damn America, the goth socialist podcast that is like a uh, turn of the century cartoon of a giant octopus with uh, clandestine written across its tentacles, <laughs> reaching from Canada to uh, to Europe uh, yeah. to New York, and. Um, I guess he's like angry, and he's um, he's supposed to represent some sort of uh, conspiracy theory. Of course, a conspiracy of cephalopods. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When we become an empire, I guess we gotta match. You know, pod damn the world. <laughs> we gotta do pod damn. What are they doing at the crooked? They're. Doing we have like to make all their dumb yeah. shows. Yes. Oh hate no. it or leave it. You're, you're <laughs> gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have a version where Anders hosts uh, <laughs> Anders hosts love it or leave it. Um, but they can instead of playing their game, okay, stop. Anders can just shout fucking stop it into the <laughs> microphone <laughs> and trash the mixing board. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a very expensive show to produce. How do they have so many fucking shows? And who listens to all these shows? Can you imagine the person that wakes up every morning? They're like, ah, oh, they open their phone and there's like seven crooked media podcasts. What's seven they, it's, hours it's of the, I mean, that's the way they feel about our shit, you know? True. They're like, how do you listen to this? And Although, like, here's the thing. Uh, the, the issue is, I remember, because I, re- I, I used to, like, I used to think, okay, I'm going to listen to Pod Save America because I'd like to understand what the liberal mindset is on certain things. And so I specifically remember um, the various Johns were talking to Adam Schiff uh, now Adam Shit, of course. Uh, I, 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 I'm sure Trump can le- legally change his name, and for the Fourth of July, I wished he would. Um, but I think Ad- Adam Schiff was saying, "Look, the Mu- the Mueller report is not going to be." This is when the kickoff of the Mueller report. They're yeah. like, "This is not going to be a fast payoff. This is something we're going to work towards slowly. That the fight against Trump is not something we're going to take lightly, and it's something we are going to." Focus on this is the long game we're playing here, basically like a checkers chess thing. And then they were like, "Yes, of course." So this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going. It's like you know, you you watch the skies. We'll keep an eye on down here in Podland. And just to imagine that you have to have such a short memory or such low expectations of your eight full hours of cr- of daily media consumption from <laughs> crooked media that you can exp- you can have heard that. And then continue to experience their content and not lose your mind with fury. 
that this was the most important thing. This was their big tent pole concept, yeah. and it was shown to be completely fucking empty, as is everything else they have done. Yeah, I think it's one of those things maybe where after a while you just realize, like, well, I'm, too, I'm in too deep now, so I can't quit comedy because I'm 32 years old <laughs> and don't have any skills or something. I think that's just how life goes. I should introduce everyone. Uh, so are we saying that the Johns were cursed by a witch? <laughs> They're cursed by a witch? Um, I, if only. No. I think that our, uh, our natural... Oh, no. Monkey's paw. <laughs> oh, I mean, I guess I, I could imagine that they are in some sort of like monkey's paw Faustian deal sort of situation. Right in like which Twilight Zone episode <laughs> do you think created Pod Save America? <laughs> <laughs> paw, Paw Save America. Mm. It's a monkey, monkey's paw. I, yeah, I, all, I could see all of them doing some deal to get where they are. Some like pact with something. Oh, well, okay, so hold on. All right, hold John, on, everyone, okay, shut yeah. up. We have to intro the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Flores, Andrews Lee, John Favreau here. <laughs> um, Riley, uh, the Canadian Riley Quinn of Trash Future Podcast, Canadian British man who's in America. What's going on? Uh, I am. I, I. I've. I've never been more estranged from a place ever than I am whenever I'm in America because I spent my all of my formative years in a place that's like it, but just a little bit more quiet and restrained. And I've spent my entire adult life like it in a place that is psychotically more quiet and restrained. Um, and so yeah. whenever I come here, it's sort of like a carnival-esque uh, bevy of sights and sounds, and all the food is too big. <laughs> Why do you eat so much? <laughs> the fuck? That's to fuel all the anger. Yeah. yeah. We got to preserve energy for spending all that time in our cars. So if you do, if, I, I do want to advance one small theory before we dive into the main content, if that's all right. Yeah, go ahead. It's that John Favreau, I think... Um, he is the Twilight Zone episode where it's not one guy, it's actually seven clones. <laughs> and then they go back into a pod uh, for the rest of the week. Um, I think John, John Lovett, uh, it's Monkey's Paw Wish. He wanted to be on a, he wanted to be, ma advance a leftist opinion on, on, on professionally. And now every time he does anything to the left of, I don't know, like the cartels, John Favreau shits all over him. That's the Monkey's Paw. Ah. Um, Tommy Vitor is a mannequin that was brought to life by a, <laughs> by a traveling witch. That's the redhead. Uh, that's the Republican. He's the one that looks oh, like okay. a giant toddler. Yeah, he's the he's the one that um well, looks like Neil Patrick yeah. Harris sort of. Okay, like uh, all of them. No, no, the the Republican <laughs> was a different one. Which one's the red? I thought that was Tommy, the redhead. I don't know. Okay. Um, no, there there was a Republican, but they kicked him out. It's not Tommy Vitor. Uh, but Justin was, Amash. Yes, yeah, that's the one. Justin, they're gonna so have Justin Amash on. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're absolute. Maybe Justin Amash only quit the Republican Party so he could become, uh, a, so he could be, <laughs> get a lucrative Pod Save America guest slot and finally get a Casper mattress. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if the Pod here's the other. Okay, I'm sorry, I keep der der no, derailing us to Pod Save go, America. Go off on this. Um, if it's Pod Save fantasy. America, if Pod Save America ever actually achieved its goal of, I don't know making uh, centrist Democrats have hegemony over the presidency and nothing else forever, then it will basically be a political revolution that was financed entirely by Casper mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this is... It, it, it used to be that, you know, political revolutions were financed by, you know, like, uh, like, like the uh, amalgamations of union dues or, or even like the, the Bloomsbury Group, which was funded by a series of sort of um, eccentric millionaires or whatever mm -hmm. like or, or the Frankfurt School which was also funded by an eccentric millionaire no yeah. it's funded by a, a sort of weird scammy online only mattress company yeah and Here. then they get Obama back in office through a coup and it's like if you like your sleep number you can keep it that, yeah. And then, yeah, that's how we all die. Um, or we win. Pod Damn America, which is funded exclusively by our only merch item, which is Gamer Boy Bathwater. <laughs> uh, <which is> <laughs> we should actually think about mattress uh Funding. No, I'm matches. gonna sell water from my balls. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have a, you know, I've talked about this on air. I have a special. There are a lot of people like me who have a special technique uh, for <laughs> self pleasure that involves mattress. And uh -huh. so, oh, God, if you're yeah. an ad guy, you're listening to this or gal, and uh, you're thinking of like places to pitch, you need like it, people just buy mattresses for sleeping on them. Um, this is good material here that we have. 
something to pitch. I'm sorry. A- I'm going to catch everyone up on the thing that you just glossed over if they happen to have not listened to previous episodes of the show or seen Dummy, the one-man show Anders Lee does. Um, do you want to go ahead and tell us how you masturbate? I uh, gyrate my <laughs> hips against a, a soft mattress. You and so... Soft. I need a f- little foam. Because you, know? you fuck your mattress, your idea for uh-huh. merch is to sell... Anders mattresses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait. Or maybe there could be special ones, just like smaller ones, <laughs> like the size of a human. That's, uh-huh. You know. That is. What if? What if it was the size of a person? Because it print anyone you wanted on it. But unlike normal <laughs> anime body pillows, this one's actually a service and a platform mm. because what it does is the anime body pillow collects data on how much you fuck it. Yeah. And then every week. You get a new anime body pillow delivered to you in the post, oh, of and course. that's how we're going to stop Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a Blue Apron style subscription box where they right. send you a anime body mattress, or it could include um, bath water from different internet personalities well, yeah, you like. Make a whole loot box. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah absolutely. <laughs> a pod table. It's like, oh, look at this. It's a lock of Alex Patak's hair, <laughs> <laughs> um, and some of some of Jake's bath water, <laughs> and it appears to be a, sh- a, a an Anders Lee mattress cover. <laughs> oh wait! I can use the bath water to wash the mattress yeah, cover. Whoa. There you go. And, and then you get our uh, seed and then mixed then in. I can you get grow my own Alex Patak yeah. with the hair. With yeah. the hair. Right. And you then he can join the Pod Save America guys right, you give it to the when race. one of them is outed as a passenger on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Yeah, <laughs> makes perfect sense. Parody. Parody. And, <laughs> and, <you> can, <laughs> and the 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 half a mattress that looks like a. a an anime character you want to fuck will fit in your dystopian neoliberal uh, pod apartment. Mm. Oh, Lord, the po- very small. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that, and then uh, there's a reason I asked if we could talk about the pod share thing today. Yeah, it's because um, the because since I've been in New York for this wedding uh, and not in London, the Trash Future rest of the guys have just done a show. I've just done a couple episodes without me there, and they talked about the pod share thing. I'm pretty sure, and mm. I'm pissed I didn't get to. <laughs> what do you call yourselves, by the way? The pod, the trash futurists. Um, you know, we don't quite have a demonym yet for ourselves. TF crew. Um, I, th- I mean, I think, I think at some point someone once called us the garbage men, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a wrestling team. <laughs> I'm I'm all right without I don't garbage men. Yeah, I don't think we need a name. We kind of like that. I think it was the the TF guys. Yeah, the T, the, uh, the TF guys, Sans Riley, have recorded a couple episodes about about well in my absence, um, and one included pod share. So I want to make my opinions known, which is just that look, if you're going to solve the problem of uh, high housing cost in San Francisco, but you're determined as, this, as all of these companies do, by the way, because. All these startup founders are so small-minded that they can't think of solving any other problems outside of those experienced by Northern California. Or maybe the world and Northern California are just very similar. Yeah. Um, it could be that. Um, so what they basically said is, look, housing ex- is expensive in cities. So we're going to do, th- for the millionth time, I might add, we're going to do this for the millionth time, which is disrupt the housing market by saying... Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to have everyone live in one big room. They don't get to furnish it. They live in little beds, and it's only $1,200 a month. What's with the anti-furnishing rule? What are they trying to accomplish well, there? Look, if... Yeah, right, just sorry. to uh, back up and get everyone on the same page of what we're talking about, I guess the first thing we should, we're going to talk about today is uh, this uh, pod share business that is sort of sprouted up in... San Francisco, which has a notoriously high rent rates, it's like one of the most expensive places to live in America. Um, CNN tweeted out this uh, little video uh, explainer um, of uh, the the person who started the business, I guess. Uh, It says, PodShare is a co-living space where tenants pay $1,200 a month to rent a, quote, pod or bunk bed in one of its San Francisco or Los Angeles locations. I'll play a little bit from the video here. Um, PodShare is affordable shared housing that we build across Los Angeles and here in San Francisco is our first site. The idea is membership based housing, so if you book a pod, you can stay across the whole network of locations. I was born in the USSR in 1985. 
My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a communist state. What if you could subscribe to a housing membership and have all your needs met? In the fridge, there should just be like cereal, ramen, you know, collegiate foods, and there should be always be toothpaste and toilet paper and just these basic things that you just need to live. Like they should just be handled for you. And okay, yeah. So uh, it's yeah. fucking terrifying, and <laughs> it's just it's the worst part of this is this woman's like face the whole time is she's just like yeah, I, it's uh, she doesn't seem particularly happy happy or sad about it she just is like this is happening this yeah. is uh how living in san francisco exists now. coming to a city near you unfortunately <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and there the entire pitch of this business she started is just like rent is really high uh what if you just lived in a weird <laughs> communal thing with a bunch of bunk beds she also says that she's from she grew up in the ussr doesn't really explain why that informs her decision to like recreate this sort of sorry to bother you esque living situation. Um, and then at the end of it, she just sort of says, Yeah, well, hopefully this won't be a thing someday, like when the cost of living just goes back yeah. down. She's <laughs> okay. Look, here's, here's the thing here's where, here's where I'm going to add my contrarian take, which is that on Trash Future, we have talked about, I don't know, at this point, probably two dozen of these various, you know, schemes and plans to disrupt the housing market, you know, by making you live in an easy chair on a roof or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, one was actually that we did a long time ago was urban, urban camping. And it's basically just you pitch a tent on your balcony and someone lives in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, you yeah. see that, like, uh, especially with the word urban, it, this no, it's idea never. pitched all the fucking time. And it's always like, what if you just lived in, like, you know like a storage unit and they're trying to sell as like a um like a modern like chic way of living like a cool you know consumer like a, it, i think the idea is that you're a conscious consumer you're like i'm not taking up that much space but what these fucking tech people are selling is the lifestyle of a road comedian but <laughs> as if it was like the goal and not a sad byproduct of being on the road 52 weeks a year um i was talking to somebody last night about this there's a tom rhodes is a comic who i think ha at some point just lived in a storage unit because he was just touring so constantly why have a home you know yeah um well they don't the, the it's weird because they don't really go out of their way to make it look appealing at all. Like the rooms are windowless and yeah, no why do decoration. They have to? It's Twelve hundred bucks a month. So yeah, like, that's yeah. kind of what they're selling. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you'll you're gonna eat your housing. To me, that's still pigs. a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, like I don't have. That, that's the absurd thing. Yeah, about that's it too, that's is that, that was what kind of threw me. That's how fucking expensive um, San Francisco is right now. But yeah. this is this is my contrarian take, is that every other one of these I've talked about. The person in charge of it has this messianic thing where they think that they've like, this is to housing as huts were to caves. You know, like this is the <laughs> yeah. next big thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at least she says, no, like people just need a place to live. It's just that it's very annoying that ev what we recognize the problem is people just need a place to live and that the solution is always like, well, I don't know. Do you need both legs? Like, you could live in half the space if you just got rid of them. <laughs> like, the solution is never, ever, ever going to be anything other than, well, we assume that the market is more or less a god and that landlords are more or less its minor saints. And so we can mostly just react to whatever it is they want. Yeah, it, something I have noticed about a lot of people who kind of grew up in the Soviet Union or came over there, like, from, you know, towards the end, is they're very practical. You know, they're not thinking in terms of uh, utopian ideas about communism, but they're also not thinking within the framework of uh, American pragmatism so so much, like the way that Americans see things through a capitalist lens. It's just kind of like you need a place to live. You know, I was on, I'm on Medicaid, so my therapist is from the Soviet Union, uh, and it's probably the Wait, best are therapist. Those, are those related? <laughs> what, the... Being on Medicaid and having a yes a therapist from like <laughs> Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. Well, yeah, not ha you don't have people who speak English very well. They if just you're give on you the, the the Pagliacci doctor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing they tell you every time <laughs> you go in. That's that is that that's medical that's medical school psychiatry unit in Kyrgyzstan is the Pagliacci joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally all they got. Yeah. <laughs> no, Basically, your, your, your final exam is you have to come up with an interesting, compelling, and original version of the Pagliacci joke. You, you go to the doctor and they're like. 
um, you know, you guys, I feel very sad inside and I don't know what to do. And the doctor goes, there's this great entertainer. His name is John Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming to town. You got to go see him. And but doctor, go, that's another of the John Favreaus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but doctor, I, my name's John and I think I'm on Pod Save America. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, if, you ha- if you're John Favreau, then you should also use Medicaid for a dentist to get some fucking braces. Damn, God is ass. Uh, is but fucked up wait, teeth? sorry, is that ableism? If he is a captive? <laughs> I don't think so, because he could fix it, but he chooses not to. Yeah, yeah. It's a choice. <laughs> Are you just making fun of his gap tooth? <laughs> I'm making fun of him for it, but, you know, some might say, as we've talked about, it is... Some people are more attracted to the gap tooth. I, I'm a t- yeah. I'm a gap tooth guy. That's it adds why a little flair. It's like making fun of some guy for you know dressing kind of spiffy, wearing those like weird stretch pants or something. Yeah, you know, wearing like pants that are jeans but look like they're really fancy. That's kind of what he's <laughs> what? doing. What? You talking about Sinbad? Like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're you're constructing a whole mind palace version of the gap right now <laughs> that I am just not fully understanding. It's a stylistic choice. It's sort of uh-huh. like we- a little flair oh. uh, wearing like um, a grill or oh, something so it's, like it's that. Oh, like, so it's like sprezzatura. Yeah. Essentially. Sure. I don't know what that means. But oh, yeah. it's, 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 it is a, a calculated kind. It's a, it's a calculated unstudiedness where yeah. um, it's, it's the way that sort of like Italian counts and so on would intentionally wear their necktie backwards to show they didn't care about anything. Right. I, yeah, I remember there's some people who do that with they'll wear their shirt inside out like a button down yeah. shirt. Yeah. That's like correctly buttoned, but it's yeah. just on the wrong side. Fucking rules. I love uh, it. Yeah. I, I, I love when you get so rich, you have to start making yourself look like a clown <laughs> just, just because you're sort of existentially bored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. Um, but doctor, I already dress like an idiot. <laughs> the uh yeah the the funny thing about uh um i guess the fucking on the nose kind of point everyone made about these like pod things when when the story came out is it like it is funny to argue you know for the existence of capitalism and use the the specter of the soviet union as like this boogeyman of, uh, you know yeah. we can't have socialism because that'll mean eventually we'll be living in these communal fucking lifeless pod situations, well, they have been created fucking by capitalism. Well, the like same the, shit. The, you know, uh, the two things. A, uh, what capitalism gives us is an infinite variety of consumer choices, so you can pick what color your pod is. And I don't think they let you do that in the Soviet Union. Um, so that's <laughs> one thing. Right, yeah. Um, but number, number two, right? Like, yeah, the, the point of... The deal that was made between sort of American and British and Canadian, whoever, uh, workers and capital, workers and say the developed north or west or wherever, and capital was so basically seed any hope of uh, any kind of economic democracy, of having much say over the economy, and we promise to deliver you a bounty of consumer goods. You will have more brands of deodorant than you know what to do with. Right. And the problem is, is that assuming everything is... And this is look. This is what we talked about actually um, when we talk about about sort of the whole concept of third wayism and Blairism is that the assumption, or I guess Clintonism in the U.S., is that there is this baseline assumption that markets will basically ju- will, m- that people will get deliver themselves a utopia through consumer choices, and that they also assumed that everyone would always be upskilling themselves that they could always make more money or what have you and that these things would more or less balance out and we would have a society of total freedom the problem with that didn't anticipate (laughs) was that something like housing which if you don't have you'll die is a different kind of consumer choice entirely from which of the 40 deodorants you're going to have. <laughs> yeah. And so the entire well, thing is like a three-card Monty swindle. So that, that's a uh, good point, and that's why like, I think healthcare is probably at the front of the big left argument in America right now. And uh, the best way to explain that is to, to go back and watch season three of The Wire where Stringer Bell goes and watches a fucking class where he learns the difference between an elastic good and an inelastic good, right? Because an elastic good like whiskey or something like that is something that will shift and change in the in the market if uh you know you'll have to adjust the price if um you know if people don't like it as much if it doesn't taste as good if it's not marketed as well but like something like healthcare or housing which you need otherwise you'll die doesn't like 
it doesn't work mathematically with supply and demand going up and down because you'll eventually just buy it. You just ha- you have to. Yeah. You'll go live in the fucking pod place, which is a shitty place to live because you know you don't want to be homeless or whatever. Yeah. I do think in the twenty second century, when we were fully automated, luxury communism and scarcity automation, all that shit's happened. Uh, everyone's going to be assigned their own podcast. That's going to be the labor. Um, that yeah. needs to be done in society. So people are going to be forced, uh, some of them against their will, to create content. And we're going to have to decide. <laughs> um, we do have the dumbest fucking economy right now. <laughs> and that, like, you know, as we get farther and farther from actually having this situation where we justify everything going by going, I make things, you know, I'm a coal miner, I manufacture shit. Everyone just has a job in this fucking city where they're like an Instagram influencer or like yeah. some abstract thing. Or they're the strategic they're the strategic communications director for a grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you run the social media for like Charmin toilet paper or here something we go, here like we go. that. I've got one. I've got one. Um new new user evangelist, but <laughs> it's the new user evangelist for a startup owned by the MTA. <laughs> How do we feel about that one, fellas? So you're, you're cribbing the term evangelist for like a brand ambassador. Oh, do you know? Oh, do, you don't. Do you not know that this is a common? Oh God, this is a is commonly it? used word in the tech and increasingly tech adjacent, uh, like PR and stri- and like um um. They call themselves evangelists. Industries. Yeah. What? So you could. So uh, you will have a product evangelist. Um, <laughs> whose job is essentially to own the strategic communications around, like, I don't know, a new business-to-business um, you know, cycle messenger service or whatever. So you're like the Joel Austin of city bikes. Yeah, you're, Do you're doing... It's, it's the prosperity gospel, but for you know an, a new um, international payments platform on Amazon Web Services. Do they have dipshits who go around cities? Like, have you heard the good news about Steve Jobs, son? Yes. Jesus. No, but... <laughs> or Jobs. Again, I, it... Yes, <laughs> I, I want I want to say no, but <laughs> I get they wouldn't. Sorry, it wouldn't be about like, have you heard the good news about Steve Jobs, son? It would more be something like, have you heard the good news about, you know, social cracker? It's going to be uh, in, aggregate your Instagram and Twitter in one place. Yeah. Oh, I've met people like that. Yeah. yeah. It, well, I've worked at restaurants where, peop- where people will come in and tell us about like, I know you have a Spotify here, but we actually have something better than Spotify. It's an app that will aggregate the music that everyone who comes into your restaurant listens to, as well as your neighbors and the top 40 oh, fucking... Dude, you could and fuck you have to pay with, $90 a month for it. If you it. live next to that place, you could fuck with their fucking yeah. setup so, <laughs> so hard. Huh. You could, the people you, coming into this taqueria really love the song Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I really didn't think it, it, would, it would sync up with early period Backstreet Boys so well, but hey, the market's always right. Yeah. The boys are always back in town at this yeah. restaurant. Well, I don't think it would work in the UK. Otherwise, it would just be playing yakety sax all the time. Oh, got their asses. Yeah, that's the top. Of the, the top of the charts in the UK is yakety sax. <laughs> what is it? We're like all, thirty years running now. We're all, we're all moved. We're all dancing to Charleston. Um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, booze is still uh, illegal. We haven't rebuilt from the Blitz. Um, was booze ever illegal? Uh, maybe not. Um, we certainly haven't rebuilt from the That was blitz. our thing. I yeah, that was our, your, yeah. your whole thing. Yeah. Um, that was from our out evangelists. Yes, 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 yes. No, ugh, uh, Britain. It's basically still the 19th century. Everyone yeah. lives in workhouses. <laughs> I've, I've come over here just to taste the free air. I mean, I guess that's kind of what the pods are pretty similar to, right? Like the old sort of the British working class. Uh, yeah, so you could, I mean, it's okay. not yet a privately owned workhouse because they're not, you know, they're not, for example, they're not feeding you a thin gruel they are doing is they're making sure there's always cereal in the cupboard. So that's a small difference. Mm. Okay, so if working for a tech company is a situation where you are like a, uh, a small-time uh, traveling preacher evangelist, that means that the Mecca, the, uh, the place where tech all comes from, the Silicon Valley, is Midsummer, which is... Uh, a movie I watched this week that made me afraid of Anders. Anders, have you seen the film? <laughs> Not yet. I wanted to go because uh, my sis was in town. We're all Nor- and my cousins. We're all Norwegian. <laughs> you should, guys. So, and should it's all about the together. oppressors. It's about the Swedes. They're evil. They're terrible mm. people. Oh wait, okay. They occupied our country for a long time. A lot of genocide. I didn't mean ongoing. To, to miss, from what I hear, miss uh, miss ethnicity, misgender <laughs> you. I thought. Am I allowed to get offended by that? I'm not. This is exciting for me. <laughs> yeah. I get really confused when I think about that part of the world and I mix <laughs> up 
uh, Swedish people and Norwegian people and all that shit. So you are not the Midsummer people. No, I'm a Viking. You're a Viking, yeah. and yeah. they're From the show Vikings. Yep, and they're Swedish. Sweet, yeah, they're yeah. Swedes. Okay, all right. Well, it's good. That means that you can you can hang out in my apartment still. Also, <laughs> I'd, li- I'd like to I'd like to add here that. The last time I came on uh, Pod Save and Pod Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, I can't we tell you how many times I'm getting a beer I'll be talking to people we t- we and they'll be like, oh, what's your podcast? Like, and I'll tell them Pod Damn America. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know that one. And they nine times out of ten, they think it, it's Pod Save America. Well, that's we were people going around. To be like, fair, yeah. we were talking about Pod Save America earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, but the last time I was on um, on on on. Pod shame America. Pod shame Riley. Riley, so sorry. <laughs> the last time I was on Pod Jam America, we talked about um, a movie made by the same director, Hereditary, um, that Jake had also seen and wanted to talk about. And I shared then something I will remind everyone of, of, of now. I'll share again that I'm one of these people who's fascinated by the plots of horror movies, but also really can't. I, I'm too freaked out by them to actually watch them, oh, and man. so I just read the plot summaries on Wikipedia, and I'm like, "Wow, that's fascinating," and I'm glad I didn't see it. <laughs> Dude, Midsummer made no fucking sense. I can't even imagine what the plot summary is going to be. It was um, it, they tried to make a movie. I'm not gonna spoil it, by the way. It's a new movie. I'm not gonna spoil it on the podcast because I know a lot of people that listen to this will probably go watch it. I'm not gonna spoil the Wikipedia plot summary either. <laughs> but uh, check it out in your own time. Yeah, they tried to make a movie that like the movie was on mushrooms it was fucking crazy it was pretty scary but it you know could have been like an hour or shorter i think i don't know um but anyway it'll make you terrified of anders and his people and um bears i don't know <laughs> i mean look this is what happens when you have uh, nordic style social democracy is everyone gets really <laughs> bored and then puts on a murder festival that, okay th- that's why this I mean, m- movie is so timely to me right now is because it is like a horror movie just about it's a a co- it's really funny that in ni- 2019 the popular summer like blockbuster horror movie is a cautionary tale about white people it's the horror yeah. of the movie without giving anything away is just like Oh no, I went too far into white people's secret origin land and like they're going to do all their like secret evil shit to me or whatever. So it's Pizzagate basically. Kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it I mean, might be rooted somewhere in there. I know this is about it, it is about the Swedes and I like dumping on them, but I got there is an Anders in Norway that people should be scared of. He's given the world good reason to be scared of our kind. Midsummer 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's summer yeah. two. Brevik's journey. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh, th- here's okay. All right. All right. I think I've, I've thought of a movie that will piss off everyone who sees it and it will make no money. Um, it's Midsummer two, but starring Anders Brevik as the uh, wisecracking hero who comes and saves him <laughs> at the last minute. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> it, oh, wait. The, the bad guys are white though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they're pagan. Yeah, they're, they're you, okay. White. We can unite with Brevik against the so pagans. It turns into like a John Wick situation. <laughs> yeah, where he's just mowing down pagans. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this, in th- this is my pitch for the movie, which is: Look, America loves a bad boy, and who is who is worse than the man who was locked away in a relatively nice prison for his horrible crimes? Um, who only only one Scandinavian mass murderer can beat another sc- set of Scandinavian mass murderers, and um, that's <laughs> yeah. the premise. Let him yeah. duke but, it out. Yeah. But everyone's gonna really hate it because it's going to be um, a, a a a white supremacist a gunman fighting a bunch of not necessarily white supremacists, but definitely weird neo pagan um, <laughs> murdering tribes. So it's gonna be a movie with no good guy. Uh, and everyone's gonna hate it. No one's gonna see it. It's gonna make a total bomb. But it's if you want to do like a produ- the uh, uh, the producer style flim flam, it would be the perfect plot. Yeah, I kind of like that. It would piss off everyone that watched it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's the springtime for Hitler situation, but updated for 2019 <laughs> with Anders Breivik as an action hero. Well, th- we do need movies where there are no heroes. In that there are no heroes in society, and movies should be a reflection oh, damn. of society. Everything, damn. everyone sucks. Everything has stayed the same. Uh, last time you were here, last summer, a year ago, we made fun of fucking Elon Musk because he was talking about being a communist and an anarchist. Literally five fucking minutes ago, I just looked at Twitter and he's talking about 
Bakunin and shit. Nothing's changed. Oh shit, are we in a Groundhog Day? Everything's gotten fucking worse, man. Oh, Jeremy man. Corbyn is uh, still inches from being the prime minister, according oh, to all the media. Can working. I tell you this? It's fucking torture. <laughs> it's, it's basically the political version of edging, except instead of <laughs> except instead of coming, you rebuild your welfare state. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just one quick note before this leaves my head. I just thought of this. Um, I actually do kind of think that there is something to like this movie being uh, very timely right now, and that it is this like the horror movie about pagan people. Because um, as we've discussed, you know, on the show, like this thing happened when Trump got elected, where like all these metal bands that were getting really close and flirting with all that like pagan Norse shit suddenly pulled back and it changed like what that stuff meant in society. Yeah. Also the new God of war game that came out post Trump is like, he's fighting like Odin and shit and like all these Celtic gods and stuff. Yeah, It's because the video game makers are all SJWs. I bet they made all the <laughs> boobs smaller too. That's the big anti-Western conspiracy is to make the boobs smaller in the video games. Oh, uh, well, Fuck. Just throwing this out there. Now I'm all there. right, baby. If you're a uh, thinking about making a mattress company, you're listening to the show, <laughs> Welfare State would be a great name for the mattress <laughs> oh, if you yeah. want to brand it on this show. <laughs> That's awesome. Because you're like comfortable when you're on the mattress? Well, we're just talking about edging yeah. and using the Welfare State as a metaphor. Would have so, been, what, uh, it's a, so what we're saying is it's a sex mattress, but also one that can break like a one-story fall. Yeah. You know. Oh. Yeah. I, yeah. I got yeah. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's for firefighters who don't want to get bored between rescuing people from houses. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, who's investing? <laughs> right right in. <laughs> Email us. Make mattresses that we can sell with my jars of the the joke originally was gonna be I was just gonna sell jars of uh just water. That's Jake water and the Oh my god. I turned it back on. Uh and then it was going to be a Hemingway bit. Gamer boy bathwater never used. Oh. Uh, don't shower. <laughs> um, <laughs> Man, uh. that actually is very funny and worth way more than the throwaway you gave it. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I was at a bar last night and I came up with it on Twitter. And then I was like, oh, I've done it. I made the best gamer girl bathwater joke. And uh, after that, the, the shimmer wore off of it. And I was like, yeah. there's no way I'm going to translate this to the podcast. No. And there wasn't. Yep. It didn't <laughs> work. It's yeah, fucking and, working. And now we're <laughs> deconstructing it for five yeah. minutes. <laughs> hey, I learned an important lesson today about different kinds of media. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is why Hemingway didn't uh, perform live spoken shit. He didn't do stand up? Yeah. No, I don't think no, so. No, this is. He just seems like a one liner guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, the. The baby shoes thing was certainly yeah. like yeah, absolutely. a Stephen Wright joke or it's, something. It, what's interesting is that what most people don't know is that if Hemingway could have written down the sound of a snare drum rim shot after the baby shoes uh, story, he would have. <laughs> it's just he. I'm not saying I'm not saying he did. I'm saying had he the technology, you know, he probably almost certainly would have. Mm. Um, and it's he's dead, so he can't sue me for libel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Fucking dead bitch. I dare you to. Su <laughs> I dare you to sue me for libel. I'll say whatever I want about you, Hemingway. Fuck you, Hemingway. Suck Riley's dick, Ernest Hemingway. He was kind of like. I don't want to compare. Uh, I think the Rogan comparisons can get a little uh, heavy-handed, but he, he was sort of like a, a sort of an empty vessel for different ideologies at the time. You know, mm. like there were fascists who loved Hemingway, leftists who loved Hemingway. Yeah. Well, if you don't say much. Yeah. And you can now it's just shitty guys who have that lumberjack beard haircut combo. You're right. They, oh man, they, that, they, I, I've noticed that 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 person exists everywhere. The problem is in London, that person is a leftist internet content creator who also loves like Mark Fisher in the films of Adam Curtis. Uh. So I have to fight every day <laughs> against the fact that unfortunately that guy also likes some good stuff. Well, that's kind of the same here. It's he's a fucking stereotype who builds furniture and shit and has a bunch of tattoos of pocket watches. But you know, he also listens to our show and gives us five uh. bucks a month on Patreon. <laughs> so uh, just be nice to him when you meet him, I guess. Uh. Um, we should probably talk about the big story that broke this weekend. Uh, that the the fucking Epstein shit is real. The Lolita Ernest Express. Hemingway was definitely on Epstein's plane. Epst oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Sue me. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he got those baby shoes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right. I did it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein 
as people have no doubt heard, is being indicted for um, being, you know, a fucking sex trafficker. Um, do either of you guys know in detail the whole, like, Lolita Express story? I only vaguely kind of know of this concept of, like, he fucking has an airplane where he goes to an island and has underage sex workers or whatever service Bill Clinton and rich people like that. Yeah. I think Allegedly. That's it. And it's <laughs> a lot of it's in the Apparently. air. So where, you know, what's the law in the air? Huh? <laughs> yeah. You get away so with it's it. It's like international waters, but it's the yeah, air. It's the air. I mean, no, the, uh, yes. Do they fuck on the plane? Like, what's the story? I right? think most of the fuck is done on the plane. I think there's also I thought it was on the, the island. Island. I mean, can't, you can't really fuck on a plane. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. <laughs> well, not if I mean if it's your own plane, it's like a private plane. You got you know beds and stuff. Okay. I believe there were. I thought they were. I I mean, this is mostly me imagining it, which I not very comfortable thing to do. But uh, I thought there were just kind of people walking around naked and on the plane doing various sex acts. Yeah, uh-huh. on maybe it was on the island though. I think I think it was the island. If I'm the honest, island. I was, right. I'm imagining Do- an island of Doctor Moreau type situation. Yeah. Uh, Dershowitz, Alan Dershowitz, um, on the flight logs, as is President Bill Clinton. As is, um, as is Mr. Things Can Only Get Better, Steven Pinker. <laughs> oh, God, that doesn't surprise me. However, and Trump, too. But uh, Dershowitz, when asked about this, said that he got a bad massage from a fat Russian guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was his excuse. <laughs> expect anyone to believe that. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. That's what billionaires... I, look, I told you. It's like the thing where they, they get so rich, they fuck up their clothes. It's then they get so rich, they have to like just start having bad experiences on purpose. So they'll do something like, you know, just hire a fat Russian trucker who has no experience giving massage, just beat the shit out of their backs, and they'll be like, ah, no one, no one else has had a massage like this. <laughs> Yeah, there truly Any is. Any rube can spend $1,000 on a back rub. <laughs> I know we keep talking about, like, Curse of the Monkey's Paw shit and, like, this tragic sort of circle that happens, but there really is, like, gotta be some truth to that where, you know, eventually, if you make enough money, you don't know what the fuck to do with it and you get really existentially empty. Like, I have a lot of friends who have gotten rich in the last few years or whatever, and, like, they're still miserable, you know? And what you do is you just keep... You probably just keep buying weirder and weirder shit, assuming, like, this video game will fill the hole or whatever. But yeah. sort of the, the farthest fucking extension possible of this concept is, like, the most powerful people in the world that are like, fuck on a plane and then go to an island and fuck a bunch of children? I guess that's, you know. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I mean, number one, I think if you, if you have become rich in the last few years at just acquiring stuff um, because you made a lot of money from a podcast... Just start an eighth crooked media podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you think John Favreau is going to get taken down? Oh, uh, I mean, Maybe. look, look. I'll, I'm not saying that any of the pods of America Johns are on the Jeffrey Epstein's flight manifest. I'm just saying that if they were, Jeffrey Epstein would have bullied them constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like they would have been brought on Jeffrey Epstein's plane to just be like egged by billionaires. <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know. They, they got, we we're getting hazed so they could come back the next year. Yeah. <laughs> do sex crimes yeah i don't want to get I, I and this sounds kind of sick and sadistic but i i am i don't want to get my hopes up about who they actually throw the book at on this but but i don't think it's gonna be oh sorry i'll, call, I'll clear that up for you it's gonna be no one yeah yeah um, trump's yeah. gonna pardon jeffrey epstein like i don't know if it, he the only reason he hasn't is probably because he's probably just distracted by getting mad at the women's world cup soccer team it's congratulations to you guys by the way um <laughs> you're you. welcome world we, uh, um, we watched it we were so into it. We totally watched. We live potted with uh, Pod Save the Women's Sports. I actually did uh-huh. watch. It was a very. Good, it was a very good <laughs> game of football. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I, I was working during. I saw some good goals. Yes. Um, some good hits, but, strikes, and yes, that's what we would call them. Yes. Um, oh, also, checks. also, thank you for not saying oh football. I thought that was the fucking American thing. Yeah, no, we fucking thank you. Come on, thank you for not doing. Come on. We, we can do every British we're thing. All, yeah. all be- thank you for all of us being better than that. But seriously, no. It's, it's Trump's going to pardon Epstein like right away. Pro- Trump probably doesn't even remember that he was ever on the plane. He's just like, <laughs> oh, Jeffrey Epstein. He was very kind to me at, you know, Wax Lounge in 1993. I'll just do. <laughs> I owe him a favor. Listen, nothing ever changes. Nothing's going to happen. We're stuck. We've been hexed by a time wizard. We're just stuck in 2016 forever, and nothing's going to happen with this Epstein thing. But for at least a moment. 
they're shook, and that's what's funny. Alan Dershowitz <laughs> has been tweeting like very frantically, like let's just wait and see what 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 he says. You Stephon know, Stefan Molyneux has the best uh, response to I this. I saw that, yeah. Which is just look, <laughs> look. Here's the thing. Okay, you're okay, okay. All right, I'm Stephen Molyneux, and I'm saying that what if you what if you were invited by your billionaire friend to a private island? You're flown over there on a plane. It's a dark room, and you have sex with someone who looks like an adult. <laughs> Where's the crime? Yeah, and you know his. He's got um, a special kind of um, Central European IQ that actually <laughs> it, it, it's nearing quadruple digits because I don't think he's, he's ejaculated in years. And he does have a, a special meditation he does with phrenology calipers to make his brow ridge bigger than ever. So I trust, I trust his fan fiction of why Alan Dershowitz could never possibly have committed any sex crimes while well, nonetheless on the sex crime island. I they're, bet they're Molyneux has a theory about sky sex, too. He's like, if you have sex in the, in the height of the atmosphere, the age of your uh, mental capacity... Well, look, is, that's actually how you time travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> obviously, as Einstein said, time is relative to mass. Right. So as you get further <laughs> from the Earth, it's not a crime because the further you get from the Earth, the older they are. <laughs> Duh. Einstein's theory of relativity is that if I... If we have sex in the sky and you're technically my cousin, you're not actually my relative if <laughs> we're in the sky? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No, we're, not, we're not bound by mere earth law um, and up, up here in the, in the cloud court. Yeah. Um, Didn't Einstein marry his cousin? Did I make that up? Yeah, I think uh, maybe. I, he's dead too. Sounds about right. He can't, yeah. he can't sue us. <laughs> True. Einstein, you married your fucking cousin. Suck my dick, you dead genius bitch. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, the other thing that's funny about this is that, like, uh, so yeah, oh, th th the end of Molly News scenario, by the way, is that he goes, maybe these very bad people filmed it without your knowledge, and now you end up having to do their bidding forever. And it's like, are you telling us more than you meant to? <laughs> like, are oh, so he's another he's another Twilight Zone. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. He's in another Twilight Zone situation where, you know, he is being, he's being controlled by a cabal of sexy children. He's <laughs> describing, <laughs> he's describing being blackmailed by <laughs> the people in this situation. In a very specific way. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, is this, is that what happened, dude? Like, what, dude? It would be hilarious. It's fucking weirder. If he's got some weird, like... Trick he did with the uh, the ruling class, and he winds up uh, forcing himself on the Pod Save America podcast. So it's just like him and the Johns. They're trying to talk about like Obamacare, and he's like bringing up fucking uh, mm. Zimbabwean skulls or something. No, absolutely. <laughs> and he would probably. I, I imagine that it, his trick. I I pr I don't I don't know if Stephen Molly New does magic tricks. I think he probably does them because he. It's his gene. It's a way to use his genius to make the coin vanish from his hand um, yeah. and, and baffle the confused onlookers. <laughs> uh, so I, I would like to see Stefan Molyneux try to get his w make his way onto the Positive America <laughs> podcast um, by pulling a coin from behind John Favreau's ear. And you know what? <laughs> Thursday John would fall for it, too. Yeah, I think Stephane so. Stefan and the Johns. Anyway, but the other thing is, like, this is, this is essentially quite a bit like the Mueller report because it's saying, well, that's fine. A procedural trick will come along and force them out. Don't worry. I, people this bad couldn't have gotten so high up in the world without committing a few crimes. And yeah, they're right. They're right. All of these people are basically criminals um, and in one way or another. You know, most of the ruling class is basically cr criminals. Um, but nothing's going to happen because they have the power to just not. They have the power to just not. Midsummer is a good movie because it can now when you make art you have to make something that's vague and sort of a Rorschach print blot thing that you think people can project their shit onto from either direction and so like Midsummer, when you watch it you can either be an SJW and be like white people are so evil or you can be a fucking Alex Jones conspiracy theorist and be like this is about George Soros yeah. and fucking uh, <laughs> Bohemian Grove and like Wicker Man shit right it yeah. can also be viewed that way because, like, the, the Bohemian Grove thing is they burn a huge effigy. They burn, like, a, a fucking owl or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's the, all their cares. Yeah, the cream. The reason I was, gonna, uh, I was bringing this up is, um, yeah, I, I do agree. I think that, like, if, yeah, if we've learned anything from any of Russiagate and all this shit, nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be some magic bullet that takes all this shit down. Yeah. But Why wouldn't Trump just pardon him? 
I it is weird though that everyone is like so scared. Like, um, it seems like s- somebody's at least afraid that they're going to get caught because uh, Nancy Pelosi's daughter. <laughs> 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 she was tweeting out that like um, she was like, you know, a lot of people on the left seem to be really excited about this, but they don't realize that like a lot of our own big faves are going to get possibly taken out too. <laughs> and that's such a fucking funny statement because it's <laughs> like I don't think that you. You no, our fi- we don't like Bill Clinton and your mom and shit. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm looking up at the poster of Alan Dershowitz I have hanging in my bedroom. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, like no one likes these fucking people. Well, I'm the exact opposite. And this is what I said. I feel sadistic because it's like you know you should, I guess, in theory, be sort of neutral about these things. But I, it would be so delicious to see Bill Clinton in handcuffs, uh, hearing testimony about all the awful, awful things he's done over the years. You know, yeah, he should be in jail. Uh, or, or, or are the are the are we including in the awful things um, like the crime bill? Yeah, <laughs> and welfare reform. Yes, oh. because he's lost all credibility politically now. You know, it's like Problem is not only is this guy a, a shitty person, he's also uh, a terrible institutional figure as well. It's just, his we need to disabuse zone. ourselves of the, would, his charm. He would just slip right out of the cuffs though now because he's a skeleton guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had like uh, yeah, he has bones taken out with plastic surgery or something. Oh yeah, he no. just becomes an escape artist. You're gonna need some tighter cuffs. Yeah. His <laughs> absolutely like if, if, why, why if there's this? if there's anyone in the world that can turn this? into like a pool of sentient liquid <laughs> and then just flow <laughs> under a door, it yeah. is Bill Clinton. He can go under a door like a cat. At. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like that's what's in the bathwater, baby. You yeah. sign up for five ninety nine. It's one it's cup of Bill, Bill. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> mix mix in a tablespoon of down home charm, and then and then uh, uh, cook His, over uh, a fire for <laughs> over, uh, over the fire of sensible compromise. <laughs> His Twilight Zone twist ending is that he gets executed by a mentally ill black guy. <laughs> yeah, How, I would love to see that. Yeah, that would be so great. Man, he's just never gonna fucking have to answer for anything. No. No, nor is Blair. The both of them are going to become... They're the Wonder Twins. They can both become liquid. Um, and then <laughs> they, can f- they can form together, of course. Well, they're going to do the Dragon Ball Z fusion dance. Yeah, they're going to do the fusion dance. And then they're going to fire a beam um, that means tests oxygen and public libraries and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Pelosi thing is funny because there's also this article that came out uh, about Pelosi this week where she's basically interviewed and says, like, you know, she says this thing that she says over and over again, and yet somehow people dissociate uh, or just sort of imagine it's not true. But she's she says of, like, AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Illinois Omar, she's just like, you know, that's not the real Democratic Party. That's for people. That's for people. Yeah. You just, you, what she said, she said about AOC, like, you want a primary. You know, that's what, that's what Biden said. Um Either she way. said that a glass of water could get elected in that district. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they keep trying to write all this shit off. The, uh, the only people that are actually, you know, dis- like likable at all in the Democratic side of the government right now um, as like, uh, oh, it's an aberration and like, you know, they're not a real thing. Um, yeah. You know, they have a f- your online fans, uh, that, but, but I have real fans. I'm Nancy uh, Pelosi. Or that whatever. article was mind numbing. First of all, it was a more endowed column, and uh, she talks. They, they're having breakfast at a diner, and she. Uh, oh, in real in real America. In re- well, San Francisco. So not oh, okay, quite. so no, not real. So a, so a diner theme restaurant. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I'm to understand it correctly, diners only exist in real America, and right? Then fake America just has homages to real America, but more expensive. Right, a new yeah. American uh, eatery is what yes. this be called. Okay. The brioche buns. I hate brioche buns. Uh, yeah, but she's ta- throughout their conversation, um, Maureen Dowd writes that Nancy Pelosi is just like taking her home fries off her plate. She's just like reaching across, stabbing them <laughs> without asking. Um, what a fucking insane thing to do. Yeah. But she says like... Uh, what the fuck was the quote? But she, she's like, she, she's like, I've, I've read everything you read. I, you know, I, I'm pr- just as progressive as you are. You look in my basement, you'll see the single pair of science from 30 years ago. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And th- then she's saying, but we need to d- focus on like a real solution. We actually have to do something that's tangible. And it's like, th- no, th- we're serious. We actually want to do this. Um, but the mind numbing thing is, is doubt is lamenting how. Uh, you know, in 2006, Nancy Pelosi was lampooned on Saturday Night Live as being this out of touch, like way kooky left wing 
person, this figure, um, which like that's this is the point is that she's being she's going to be cast that way anyway by the right. You might as well have some ideas to back it up that are actually going to improve people's standard of living in this country. Um, and then the other thing that really got in my cry, I guess, is uh, she was talking about how um, there were some House Democrats who apparently resented Obama for not uh, campaigning for them after he they helped him pass the ACA, which uh, might be true, but she doesn't mention the fact that, I mean, they lost, they ended up, a lot of people ended up losing, but it, it, the, the reason behind that wasn't because Obama didn't get enough face time with them at some, like, campaign event in Northern Virginia. It's because he, the institution of the Democratic Party and, like, the congressional, um, like, the, the body that was behind funding, organizing congressional races, all that infrastructure was gutted by Obama. Like, all this stuff is interpersonal. It's like, oh, Obama didn't do this enough. He didn't, you know, it's these, these personalities fighting. She's not looking at the systemic reasons how the Obama administration just fucking shot themselves in the foot for maintaining any kind of, like, congressional majority because they were just, they didn't care about it because they wanted, they, they don't believe in that. They don't believe in a, a one party actually commanding uh, the government and actually getting what they want to do passed. No, that it's wouldn't like, be compromised. It wouldn't be compromised, no. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, okay, number one, there's a reason all these people understand politics just as an extension of high school. Yeah. Um, because this literally is, they are just acting out personal petty grievances in the structure of a, in a wider institutional structure where the rules are basically set down and there's a principle you can complain to if th someone bullies you. There's a reason they're so feckless and it's because they've never been out of school. They're 60 and 70 year olds who have always just gone from a lead institution to a lead institution. Uh, by playing by the rules, by being great at applications, and by being amazing at homework. And so, of <laughs> course, they're never, they are never, ever going to have any kind of original idea, except the one original idea they had, like, 40 years ago. And, like, look, this hap happens in the UK r um, quite a bit right now as well. So what your American listeners may not be familiar with is... Um, after Jeremy Corbyn brutally seized control of the Labor Party by being voted in, um, <laughs> and then, semitically and then consolidated his grip on the Labor Party by being voted in again, um, by, by us, by 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 a um, by by a, by the, the sort of the CD membership, um, a, a bunch of MPs broke off from the Labor Party. Um, and IG and the called themselves well, OG they, IGs because th because they're all completely incompetent chancers. They went through like five different party names before they came up with one that wasn't infringing on another copyright. <laughs> <laughs> they're called Motley Crue now. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, their plan for the NHS is just to play Doctor Feel Good and hope that works. <laughs> um, so what th what they did was they said we it's like seven Labor MPs and three Conservative MPs and then another couple sort of joined. And there was had this precipitous rise and fall where it's now split up. Uh, it no longer exists. Or maybe one or two of them are there in like a rump state. Yeah. So it's, li it's like when um, the Roman Senate was moved to Ravenna. I think it was moved to Ravenna um, after the schism between East and West. Of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, it just ruled this <laughs> rump Western Empire. Never mind. Um, anyway, um, and so, but what they did, their website, when they were still a party and had MPs, is they said, we don't believe in the, in the old ideas we believe in exciting new. We have an exciting new plan for Britain, where a strong welfare state is underpinned by a roaring economy, and the market and public and and the public sector can work together to deliver the best outcomes. And it's like that. What you realize is new ideas no longer describes the ideas these people are having. <laughs> new ideas is now a proper noun. Capital N, capital I, new ideas. It refers to the ideas that were new in the 1990s and oh. late 1980s. Yeah, like the word modern. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, Artistic movements. It, it, it refers to a specific set of ideas that are the only acceptable ones we can have because they have just massive, they have learned the lessons of the mid to late 20th century. They don't want to be called communists because, like, you know, most, vo fully half of voters alive right now were either not alive or were, like, four during the Cold War. We don't give a shit about it anymore. Yeah. Um, but that they, you can't, they can't move past that set of new ideas because they are just living, they are living in the world, they're deep in the world of capitalist realism. The limits on their imaginations are set so tightly that 
30, uh, single payer health care was nothing more than a thing to have campaigned on 30 years ago so that you can tell someone who is telling you to campaign for it again or to campaign for hopefully something bigger than that original Hillary care plan yeah, right. um, so that you can tell them to shut up because you don't want to hear from them because you be it, you know what it is it's like someone who's become amazing at, a, at using a typewriter saying it's looking at a computer and saying that'll never work where's the <laughs> ink where's the ink on this typewriter right and this is i'm assuming the policy of everyone in england we're uh, all typewriter people <laughs> yeah absolutely we're all typewriters um that's why there are no english pro gamers your cell phone has um, a little typewriter except on for it? except for h bomber guy uh there are no english um <laughs> esports people <laughs> are there not oh, that, that guy's that guy oh yeah he is he's english so, so one of the Oh, well, before I before we get to that, I just want to shout at tic -tac -toe. out. We can play tic tac toe on the typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's esports in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah, that's Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I picked up O. <laughs> oh yeah, and then someone just types the N word at you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just want to mods. <laughs> I do want to very quickly shout out a uh, guest we got on the show, Shahed Butar, who's running against Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco. He actually might have a shot because they have a top two primary there, so he might be able to go to head-to-head -head with her in the general election. Right now, he needs to raise $50,000. He's at 39890 so uh, check out oh, sheesh. Um, Shahid for change yeah. dot US. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's I, good. Am I allowed to say anything about that because I'm yeah. a Canadian citizen living in Britain, or would I, can, or would no, I no, be no. violating <laughs> some kind of act? How, you know how much uh. backseat 10 Downing Street I do to your people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you You've done backseat 10 Downing Street from a flat in Edinburgh last year. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's all I do. I love it. Go ahead. Um, oh, no, I was just saying, yeah, he seems pretty cool. <laughs> I, hope I, don't yeah. go to, I hope I don't get, go to prison for saying that. He no. seems pretty cool. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear take from <laughs> Riley Quinn. That's why I came You thought you were going to get in trouble for that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you know what is funny is that she might be taken out in this like jungle primary thing, and it. I, I guess that's it, funny to me because she made that remark about AOC, like, "Oh, a glass of water could have got elected in that fucking yeah district." As or if whatever. the same isn't true in fucking San Francisco. Also, it, it shows you, and it, this speaks to what you're talking about with these people being perpetual fucking students and nerds, that they believe on some level in like this meritocracy aspect of the government, and it's really funny because. You know, if you do think that, like, someone like AOC or Rashida Tlaib or Ilhan Omar are winning, you know, in some weird place where, well, you know, it's easier to win in that primary than it would be in something that I want or whatever. Like, all Kentucky, these people should be... example. All these people should be against the Electoral College. It should be the first yeah. fucking thing that they try to abolish. No, because it has day. the word college in it. Oh, that's why they like <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. The most elite college of all. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have to call it, like, the Electoral... Uh, electoral. The Electoral Trade School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because then they want to keep it for every state but their own. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we, we'll, we'll call it uh, we, the, elect the Electoral... Um, just figuring things out for a while. <laughs> the or it's a... Uh, universal fighting like ufc shit or something like we make all the electoral college people into cage fighters which then they think is low brow yes <laughs> absolutely um but i mean like you the know sorry, i have one more the electoral chain restaurant <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah trash middle america um but yeah i mean like if if she really thought that then like you know I mean, the fucking like, a guy won the presidency who was a game show host. Like this system is right. clearly broken. So wouldn't yeah. you? Be All hail Pat Sajak. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, he's a conservative actually. Oh yeah, I know. That's, that's why I think that the net, the natural conclusion for President twenty twenty four Pat Sajak. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, Drew Carey. He talks to us with the skinny microphone and shit. That'd be cool. Um, Drew Carey also got weird, thin, and gaunt and skeletal. Yeah. Oh, I bet he's a third wayer. I bet he's, he's a libertarian. Yeah, is he's he really? done shit for Reason Reason TV. Is, yeah. it, is oh, there man. something like about being a game show host? Is there a reason they're also right wing? I mean, it's uh, like American Dream. It's like capitalism yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, because it's it. A bunch of silly rules are made up where you have to embarrass yourself in front of a large group of people yeah. and people watching at home. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of different ways to go bankrupt or owe money somehow for some reason for answering arbitrary questions, guessing like the guessing a, a word. Or uh, in, in a Canadian game show, just having a bunch of slime dumps on you for no reason. Oh, that's uh, getting canceled. Yeah, which is yeah. The thing that they're obsessed yeah, with too. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's. I heard. 
I heard that that's worse than death. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, so when, when Stalin rounded people up and sent them to the gulags to be told to do better. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of cancellations, I do want, just want to go back to the independent group real quick because one of the big things they were touting was um, getting on top of this anti-Semitism thing, which you've said is like an actual serious problem. Uh, in the Labor Party, yeah. not as much as the media well, portrays it, the, the but they, yeah. s- but right out of the gate, they uh, did an uh oh, right? They just said something oh, racist. Oh, right away. Yeah, um, yeah their, their first racial gaffe was within five hours of announcing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Angela Smith, uh, I believe it was Angela Smith, um, said uh, we referred to uh, ethnic minorities as people with a funny tinge. <laughs> which is, uh, just very interesting um, And then they, they said We're not racist uh, Chaku Romana said that all such accusations uh, Were not fake news But false news <laughs> Wow, <laughs> um, oh. Purveyor of false news Wow, The British just have to be extra fancy Yeah they just have um, to make it a little bit more classy Yeah 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 um, So you know I mean look again it's my, my thing with the independent group is that there's the, the experience of having seen their rise and fall over the course of two months, like uh, you know, prayers up, you know, March to May 2019, <laughs> uh, for sale for sale political party website never used. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it, it's it's um, it it just sh- it shows that they assumed that because they had all of this work from like unions and campaigners and internal party mechanics behind them, but. Like they just didn't really ever notice it. They assumed that running a political party was just about doing like epic clapback gifts on Twitter, going on Newsnight, and you know saying that uh, Jeremy Jeremy Corbyn wants to take us to Venezuela, but in the seventies, um, mm. and 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 then they just immediately kept fucking up constantly, constantly. Everything from their first party name they registered they didn't check to see if anyone else had registered it what was it uh change the the, <laughs> it's a, the change group and so then they tried to register change.org which is a very popular political yeah. petition site yeah. um and so that didn't work they got sued by tracy chapman yeah and um it was just it it was again and again and again and like in an incredibly compressed time frame like it was like a version of Mr. Magoo, but with no luck. And where are they now? Are they still at it? I mean, they're all still MPs because when you re- resign from a party, yeah. That, so that's the point I wanted to get to. Is like, this, it, because we were talking about earlier, this isn't like Justin Amash uh, deciding he's not a Republican anymore for all his constituents who voted for ju- they voted for Justin Amash. They didn't vote for the Republican Party. Yeah. In the UK, these people were voted in. As labor MPs, their constituents voted for a party, so they're yeah. like, this is a very undemocratic. This is just nakedly undemocratic. Well, look, it's the the problem. Okay. Without getting too much, without getting too much into the sort of vagaries of UK electoral pol- of UK electoral processes, um, parties have legally. Like, parties are legal organizations, and you can refer bre- breaches of their rules to like government bodies, like int- intra party rules. You can then refer breaches up. So they're not just like a random social club. They are sort of semi-legal entities. And so, like, they're legal entities, but they're also semi-regulated like regulated entities. Yeah. And so different parties have different rules for selecting MPs. Um, the conservatives actually, just like the Republicans, had a much more open primary um, in t- 2016. The conservative party, it's just, you, it's very easy for individual members of the conservative party in a given constituency to just do a trigger ballot, be like, nope, we don't like this guy, he's out. Um, we're gonna just we're just gonna kick him out of the party. And he's still the MP, but he's out of the party. And so next election cycle, the Conservatives will then select someone else to then be the Conservative MP running for that seat and wear the big blue ribbon. Um, that's the <laughs> UK is so dumb. <laughs> um, and then uh, and then the original person will run as an independent, um, and they they can do what they want. I see. The same thing with with change. The idea what with change UK now the independent group now the independent group for change. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they love. They Someone lo- should start like a like an ultra left party and just call it the independent group against change. Yeah, um, the independent group to make it the seventies in Venezuela, no less. <laughs> they, just, um, they just call it Radiohead next. <laughs> 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 um, so in labor, it's a much more sort of closed process where it's actually very hot. Ho- and again, these were in rules that were made under Blair because like 
when the centrists seized the progressive parties or the, the worker parties, what they did was they changed all of the rules to basically make them heavily top-down controlled. So, they're, so it's very hard for labor members in constituency parties to get MPs deselected. So like there have been, there, uh, there are, there's one MP in Vauxhall um, who was selected over a black candidate in the 1980s because the Labour Party Central Command didn't believe that a black candidate, that it was ready for a black candidate. <laughs> um, and she's uh -huh. just best friends with Nigel Farage. And we can't, she's called Kate Hoey, and we can't get rid of her. It's impossible to get rid of her because it was always like tricky selections. Yeah. And then in the 1990s, Blair made it e way harder. Um, and Bra Blair and then Brown made it way harder to get rid of MPs. So we have this very fractious labor coalition that's full of people who hate the leadership um, who we just can't get rid of. And they, and again, if I can, unfortunately, if I can cast a little bit of a, if, if Americans are looking over to the UK and being like, we are so close to getting a socialist government in a core capitalist country right over there, this is going to be amazing. Unfortunately, like, don't hold your breath because you need for 50 or more percent of the MPs in the House of Commons to do literally anything. By the way, that's why the Brexit stuff hasn't actually changed that much, even though there's going to be a new PM. Um, and so if, let's say, maybe 40 Labour MPs are dead set against um, any co all of Corbyn's agenda, then they're going to be able to work with the Conservative MPs and effectively be able to prevent him from doing anything. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do to get rid of them. The change... Uh, the well, I mean, same story over here with, like, if Bernie wins, yeah. you yeah. know, he's obviously going to be hamstrung by... But at least you guys party. know how to... At least it's easy for you guys to, like, primary someone. Like, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. it's you can just say, we're going to primary this person, we're going to challenge them. So <laughs> where we can't primary our MP. What yeah, is the, the MP thing is so fucking What weird. is the deselection process like? Is that in any way Well, reselection re basically happens when... Um, a reselection. So MPs tend to be selected by the party. So yeah. what a, one of the other things that happens with br how British machine politics works, and where you get a lot of labor centrists, is there are these homework people where they'll come up, they'll get they'll get good gra they'll get excellent grades at a university that's good but not too good, um, and they'll be able to claim a working class background, but they made good, and they maybe they worked in PR for a while, but they were always at the head of their labor students. Um, was l young labor is cool. Labor students is reactionary. Um, all these things about British politics are lovely. Um, and then they'll be have made the big big wigs and their labor students. And then maybe they'll have like met David Miliband. And then maybe you work as his researcher for a bit. And maybe you get made a special advisor or political advisor. And then at some point, you know, um, an MP decides they don't want to be an MP anymore. Uh, their seat is now open. We can select a labor candidate for that seat. If it's a safe seat and you're friends with someone on the a party bigwig, they'll basically get you parachuted in, and so you'll be MP for an area you've never been to. Hmm. Wow. Because you, if you want to vote Labour, you only have the one choice. You have to. I would ha if I want to see Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister, and I live in, um, you know, um, Birmingham Yardley, I must vote for Jess Phillips. There is. Nothing else I could do, to, to, to uh, other than vote for Jess Phillips. Huh. Well, that I, sucks. I, sorry. <laughs> sorry. A little no, no. Bit, I, I guess the the Pod Damn America listeners can learn a little bit about the way British politics works. Yeah. Sorry. I was trying to keep up because I was a little blurry on how all this shit works. But that. Don't worry. So is everybody in the UK. Yeah. Well, yeah. we do have a good primer uh, lot we did last summer with Riley and yeah. Milo about the True. Lib Dems. Ah, the history Which, of the Lib Dems. Why didn't the why didn't the IGs just join those bastards? Um, because they're, er they're, er they're arrogant careerists who wanted to say, no, we're doing something totally new. Actually, <laughs> that's another thing they did. They said, we're not a party. We're a platform for change. Uh, okay. And that's why we don't have policies, per se. <laughs> I was like, oh. but you, A, what's that mean? We're an experience. B, yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah. They're more of a... <laughs> They're more of an app. We're an app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not so much a political party as a loot box. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, if you could just give these people, mo like, the wh maybe, the, what, the 20% of the British electorate that is, like, quite, you know, firmly centrist, if you could just send them a loot box with, like, a model of a Harry Potter wand and then, like, a small bottle of gin and then a little fridge magnet that just says, keep calm and drink tea. 
<laughs> then you could just have them politically disengaged forever because they would be blissfully happy. Are are people dumb about Harry Potter over there too? Because everyone here is just. I mean, our liberals are like. Yeah, our li- they, they mental yeah. melted their fucking brains. Yeah, it's the only book our liberals have also read. What the fuck? I was hoping it would be like a thing where it's like, oh, no one over here actually likes that. Um, oh God, I wish. I wish it were the case. <laughs> Everyone's I, just still into Dickens. I mean, in um, in so. Basically, um, unlike unlike New York, um, London is full of very large and functional rail stations. Um, one of them, uh, Kings Might Cross, is uh, it's 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 in sort of North London. It's in Central North London, um, and it's the platform where Harry Potter is supposed uh, to go to right, right. Nine and Hogwarts. Yes, three. they have a platform nine and three quarters sign in Kings Cross, and you can see tourists queuing for. Like an hour. Do they run into the wall? <laughs> I, they do you, I do you one better. <laughs> they have built a baggage cart halfway into the wall. And then there is a, a person who will take a picture of you wearing a Hogwarts scarf oh. that another person holds behind you just out of frame so it looks like you're running into the wall. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have bummed you out. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks so much. I wish they just ran into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they yeah. just broke the real, the shit. real Harry Potter experience is uh, you run into a full wall. speed into a wall, <laughs> and then in your coma, you're whatever you want. That's how we fix these fucking people. Is we got to convince them to run head on into a brick wall. <laughs> like, at least, at least in the Looney Tunes, I'll sell like, tickets. At least in the grand. Looney Tunes, the Roadrunner had to paint a cave on the wall for the coyote to run into it. You oh, know, man. These I'll people... Go, I'll set it up outside of Pod Save America's <laughs> live show. I was like, for $20, you can run into this... It's the fucking platform nine and three quarters. Yeah. And you'll go to Harry Potter land. You just have to close your eyes and believe that's the only way to get through the wall. Well, I feel like one of the Johns could get a, a political consulting gig in the UK and convince Chakwe... Chaka, Chaka Umana. Chaka, well, yeah, that guy. That if he does that, he'll get elected prime minister, and he would actually do it. <laughs> he just run. So that's that's Dan, that's Dan Pfeiffer, I think. Yeah, yeah. Dan Dan Pfeiffer, because Dan, Dan Pfeiffer is the oldest one, um, and he's also the one with the most sort of political consulting experience. So I think what'll happen is that his Twilight Zone episode would be um, going on a foreign trip where he's drawn into a cult, and not all is as it seems. <laughs> <laughs> what if? Uh what if we get liberals to run into Trump's wall and oh. uh, Ooh. enough of them run into it to where it breaks it down? And that's the yeah. spell. The yeah. spell. It's like the hands across America thing, but yeah. everybody Baggage running. Baggage carts across the southern border. Yeah. 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 And that, that this, it turns out the magic was believing in ourselves. Yeah. Oh, I, I've, I've made this. Cl- Giving I've made, yourself brain damage. I've actually made, the, I have made this claim before that Harry Potter is a fundamentally neoliberal fantasy. I, we read a piece that you wrote yeah. on it on the show. I just oh, yeah. we'll link to it. Like Jacobin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because it's, it's it's just to s- the, s- the summary point I made in that in that in that piece was that um, Harry Potter is a world where going to a prestigious enough school gives you reality bending powers. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dream is private school. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. Balls. Anyway, that's why Britain's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> because because. It, because we are unable to get rid of a rump group of labor MPs. What does um, rump mean? Rump as uh, sort of small, uh, a small portion of something without the sort of real power it might have had. So okay. the Western Roman Empire, I said earlier, was sort of over a rump here. That state. means not so small, something that's a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, they were a big, a big ass yeah. of the yeah. labor party, the big juicy ass of the labor party. That's we don't not doing need anything. a rump labor party. We need a donkey labor party. I'm yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the, all of those people uh, who re- refuse to leave the Labour Party, and it's very hard for us to get rid of. Like we tried to pass mandatory reselection last year at conference. We almost did, and got something close to it, but not quite. Anyway, the, all those people are also like massive Harry Potter nerds, um, and we can't get rid of them. And they're going to keep us from doing socialism because it's not what Dumbledore would have wanted. God, that fucking sucks. Right? <laughs> I'm just so you like. You can't, because, yeah, okay, I, I think I understand what you're saying, is here in America we primary people, and th- th- you just have the system where they're just, like, impossible to fucking, yeah. you can't fire them or anything? No. no, they can, it's it's basically, 
it's the one place we have like the UK has pretty good employee employee rights compared to you guys, mm-hmm. but it's the one place where we have basically a jobs guarantee. <laughs> it's just for like <laughs> West Streeting. Oh man, no, oh, that sucks. <sighs> uh, wow. Well. I am actually I'm actually moving soon into Corbin's constituency, so I'm very excited to vote for him directly. Oh, cool! Nice. Oh, I'm sorry you hate Jewish people, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining now. You know, in a few years, we got Grandpa Bernie in the White House. Jeremy's on a visit. He's Prime Minister, and uh, they're visiting a prison. And Epstein, Clinton, Dershowitz, all these assholes are in the labor yard, and they're forced to. Uh, burn a pile of Harry Potter books. Oh, and they're uh, they're they're getting their dicks sucked by Dementors. <laughs> 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 and they're like, it's actually not so bad in here. You just, <laughs> if you just move it, to, it's fucking vacuous face down to your dick. <laughs> it's kind of like an eight year old boy. It feels a little bit like. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> gracious. Oh wait, Great okay, to- hold on. The 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 sex trafficking shit that happened on the Epstein plane and island. Was Bill Clinton going to fuck young girls? I just made it into boys just because I'm er, joking about pedophiles, and that's usually the joke, right? Yeah, he was. I think he's underage women, right? Well, we'll see what comes out. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll find out what exactly, what exactly um, the deep state cabal is going <laughs> to invent that Jeffrey Epstein did. We'll break uh, Bill Clinton out of his. Uh, his child predator prison with a flying motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take him on an adventure. <laughs> 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 oh, God. That was fucking dumb. Yeah. Um, yeah. What time are we on? Uh, if you're in New York, next Saturday, the 13th, I will be doing a preview of my Edinburgh show, Dummy Edinburgh, right? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's going to be at Halyards in Gowanus at 7 p.m. It's free. Pay what you want. And uh, if you're in the U.K., come see it in, in Edinburgh at uh, the newsroom. It's going to be every night at 6.15. And y- you could do a double header one night if oh, you yeah. want to come to that and then check out the uh, the garbage men, the trash boys. Yes. Uh, you can come. Yeah, so we're, we are trash also. Futurists. Trash Future is doing one night only a... Um, live podcast at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. It's on August 10th. So go to Dummy, um, which is going to be done at like 7-ish. 7.15. Yeah. 7.15. Go to Dummy, and then go to um, go to the Mexican restaurant off St. Andrew's Square, because they offer you a, um, a, a two-for-one if you've got an Edinburgh ticket. Get two-for-one tacos. Get that some of that world famous British Mexican. All the bur- all the burritos right. there are fucking great. Yeah, I, really? I don't know why they make haggis burritos. Oh, yeah. damn. delicious! They're, they're good as hell. All right, that's a, that does sound pretty tight. And then continue to the Trash Future live show, which is on PQA venues at the Royal Mile at eight. Boom. That's how. That's your. I've just designed your night for you. <laughs> it's not a political party. It's a design my night <laughs> service. <laughs> it's it's a it's a night. It's a not a political party. It's a nightclub recommendation and guest list service. It's, it's a fucking experience. You don't buy your own shit anymore. You don't curate the things that you consume. You buy a loot box. We send you a bunch of shit. A bunch of weird Funko pops. Even though you're 37 years old and you, you know, should be. I don't know. Building a thing or no doing collecting something Funkos. masculine. No, fuck you. You experience. We send you a jar of water. You jack off to. We send you the uh, no. It's it's the, the experience Anders body pillow. The experience <laughs> economy is buying a jar of gamer girl or boy bath water, and then going to a bar where they serve all the drinks in mason jars. Which, <sighs> again, I know it's hacked to hate that, but I fucking hate it. No, it's funny. I mean, um, I work in restaurants, <laughs> and it's like why, and, why, 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 and and then. You can instead of voting for a political party, you can just live your truth, <laughs> and then know that it's just going to like come out through the power of vibes in the market and stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna make a craft cocktail with the gamer girl bathwater, oh, and God. give myself I uh, hated that fucking <laughs> some horrible disease. It's been a really rough couple of days <laughs> just in the world, huh? Yeah, anyway, I, I I think that she's the one that sang the fucking Cuphead raps that I was fuck I was I was obsessed with a couple weeks ago that I put on the show. Someone um, needs to make a new Silent Hill game. <laughs> just, be, just because of all that has happened, yeah. I'd l- I, we need Pyramid Head's take on this. <laughs> um, uh, also, can I, if I may, if go, I may go, plug, go please. Um, listen to in addition to coming to the Trash Future Pod live show, listen to the Trash Future Podcast. 
th- on any device that you might have handy. Of and course. if you sign up, this is going to be the free app probably? Probably, yeah. If you sign up for our Patreon, you can hear me, Riley, and Milo. Uh, they explain the history. The, 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 they get really into the weeds with the British parliamentary politics. Pretty interesting stuff. The, specifically the Lib Dems. The Lib Dems. Specifically the... You know how we often say that centrists just love being swindled by the right? Yeah. Like they are just the Washington generals to the Harlem <laughs> Globetrotters? Yeah. The single most Washington generals <laughs> ass political maneuver ever pulled was pulled by the Lib Dems, and we explain it in this episode, so do check it out. <laughs> yeah, All right, that's I remember. Patreon, pa- Pod Damn America. It's a good one. Yeah. Hey, if you guys like the show and you want to hear more crazy stuff, we do a lot of stuff that is fucking evergreen, man. You go back through our catalog and listen to explainers and deep dives and shit about all sorts of interesting stuff. The Lib Dem episode is quite good. Highly recommend it. Um, For me, I'm coming to Denver. I'll be there probably as this episode drops. Um, If you follow me online, you will see it on my pinned tweet. I'm doing shows all over town basically all week and then uh, rounding things out at the Colfax Comedy Festival on Sunday night at a bar called Tandem. I'll be doing stand-up and also a live edition of this show. Uh, I won't have my damn fan boys with me. It'll be uh, me and a couple, I'll probably bring on some local comics who I am a fan of out there. I think, um, I shouldn't say anything because I'm not sure if everyone's confirmed, but uh, some comics that I like quite a bit will be doing some fun stuff on stage out there. So, uh, some yeah. fun stuff. If you're <laughs> in... Uh, if you want to see how the bathwater gets made, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to get on a plane. Jake, um, Flo- Jake, Jake, <laughs> Jake Flores is now officially doing a shower show. <laughs> yeah. Jake, Jake Flores to the main stage. Jake Flores to the main stage for the show. Shower show. I don't care anymore. I'll do anything for money. I'll be doing live girlfriend experience. Um, <laughs> but if, you're, if you're a girl and you want to know what it's like to date a podcaster, <laughs> Jake Flores will hang out and refresh his Twitter while you watch a movie. If you're a boy, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, right. Actually, Jesus Christ. That was funny and very real. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Everything is so horrible in the future. <laughs> yeah, uh, Patreon, Denver, and then I'll be touring after that, and you'll see all my shit online. Um, and Yoko, baby. Next one's on the 16th. El Cortez. It's finished? It's finished. It's finished.